was born by the roadside in a broken down carriage came into life on the run found on the doorstep of a nearby orphanage no Notice we're kind of cutting this stuff a little bit differently tonight. We're kind of uh, doing it quite a bit differently. This is kind of how I set up when I get into a little bit of production mode where I want to get a lot done fast, especially it's not often the way I've been doing this. It's not often that I have the timbers already already set aside and ready to go. So this is kind of a nice thing. Um, so basically I'm doing a lot of drop cutting tonight. And I find that when I have a timber out of square or something like that, it's actually a little bit easier for me to do the drop cuts because I can uh, drop down on each adjacent face. Because I notice a lot of times by the time you get to the backside and you go to make that cut, it's not quite square all the way around and you get that, that nasty end cut. I mean, we've got a little bit of that here, but it's really not bad at all. And it's kind of going the direction I want it to for drop cutting these tenons. A lot of times you see me kerf these out, smash them out with a chisel. But like I said, when I'm really looking to make time and really get after it, this is kind of the way I like to do it. But these tenons, now I'm going to drop them down. I could just very easily, could very easily square these lines down off of here, off of the adjacent face. But, and we're probably going to do that, but keep in mind if you do that, make sure you're going off of the adjacent face that meets up with your heiress, which if you remember, that heiress is the uh, corner that's most square on there. That's where you laid your reference face out and your adjacent face. Don't try going from this side or something like that or on the bottom because it's not going to be square to your reference face. A lot of you asked me in the comments or mentioned in the comments, this timber being out of square, how's that going to affect everything? Well, this is kind of how, we, how I deal with it. I kind of try to do as much as I can right off of this face right here. Now, when I get to the back side, and it's time for me to cut that out with a chain mortiser, I'm probably going to stay a little bit in the lines there and then clean it up with a chisel just so that mortise lines up. When you're going a through mortise from both sides and it's a little bit out of square, that's when they don't line up on you. So. That's kind of how I combat these issues a little bit. And so far, so good, it's worked out for me. But um, the drop cut, I can, make a, I can make a lot of time doing it this way. And right now, right now that's kind of how I, I want it. And a lot of you also ask me, well, how come you don't lift your timbers up and work off the sawhorses more? A lot of times when I'm running the power tools and stuff like that, I like to try to be above my work. I can see the blades better. I can see what's going on a little bit better. It's a little bit harder on the body, but I have to work like this so much at work anyway, working on units and whatnot. This is kind of uh, really it's old hat. But um, so if you're wondering why, that's why. And remember how I said in the last video I had that one cluster of knots 
it looks like we're going to pretty well miss that, except for there's another one right there, but we're kind of going to negate those by drop cutting this. We'll cut right through that smooth and we won't have the same problem I had in that last video where, uh, or a couple videos ago when I had to sit there and chisel that knot cluster. So we're going to keep going. I'm going to throw you back in time lapse and should just call it time lapse Tuesday, I suppose. So anyway, we're going to get back to it. sing to you, but I don't think any of you really want that. Put the finishing touches on these tenons. Nice quick night. Only had a couple hours to really work out here tonight. You can tell it's back to work, I tell you that. Um, but, still got a lot done tonight considering probably uh, by the weekend we should have no problem having these queen posts finished and ready to go up. And then the rest will be depend on weather. Kind of looks like we have some. Uh, kind of looks like we have some systems moving in. I guess they're forecasting another nor'easter, but which is all right because now that one end closed in. We get a nor'easter. This building at least won't fill up with snow again, which will be good. Chamfer these edges. Yeah, I like when I can get a bunch of timbers laid out next to each other. 
and uh, run with it from there, you know. It's kind of nice. Kind of nice. Now it's time to clean up. But I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Just a little bit more progress, one step closer to the end of this project. Um, so next time up, we're going to break out the chain mortiser. I don't know how many of you are sick of watching the chain mortiser, but, uh, well, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. These five queen posts and six timbers after that, this frame is up. And uh, that is exciting. So we'll see if I can get this done before haying season. That would be ideal for me. But uh, the only thing I'll have left to buy is uh, rafters. And I probably, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to mill them or not. I, I know I'm going to mill some of them myself. I'm not as worried about those because it's kind of, you know, it's rough cut. But, um, and they're 2 by 8s and they're going to be 16 inch or something like that on center. I'm not sure if I'm going to go 16 or 2 foot yet. 2 foot will probably be fine with the steepness of this roof. I don't feel it's going to hold snow or anything and the spans really aren't that wide by the time you get the uh, gambrel effect in there. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you on the next one.